Hello, my name is Dylan, and you're about to watch a three-part series on how I turned these cabinets into two enclosures for my boa constrictors. Hopefully this will give you some ideas for something that you can do in the future. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the box below and I'll try to get back to them as soon as I can. Enjoy. All right, so today I'm going to film a short tutorial on how I've turned these uh, cabinets into a snake or a reptile enclosure. So these I picked up on uh, just from someone in town for like 50 bucks. It's actually supposed to stand vertical. I think they're for speakers or something like that. They're just sort of wall cabinets. So I ended up laying them on their side. And for right now, I've just been putting tubs in them. We're going to change that today. Uh, so I have uh, a bow in here, and he's still fairly young, so he's just kind of in his grow out tub right now. But I, I, I want to expand his enclosure size, so my idea was always to use this structure as uh, the cage when he was ready to do it. So there's a few modifications that I have to do throughout the day, so uh, I'm just going to try to film and document them. And of course, you're never going to find something exactly like this, and this may not be the exact way you're supposed to do these things, but just sort of a do-it-yourself kind of job and maybe give you some ideas, uh, brainstorm them things that you have around the house or something that you could pick up to do the same sort of thing. Alright, so I've moved the cabinet out into my living room. That way we can work on it out here without disturbing the animals. So, the first thing that we need to do is a couple things. One is, I'm not sure if, how well you can see, but this shelf needs to come out. That I want the whole four foot length up until this drawer to be part of the enclosure. So this needs to come out. It's fixed, so I just need to cut it out. And then I'm also going to take the back off and replace the back. I've punched a bunch of holes in it and it's just kind of a sort of a cheap cardboardy type material so I'm going to do that. It's actually only about 7 a.m. here right now so I have to be kind of quiet. <laughs> We're actually going to use this piece a little bit later so I'm going to put it aside. We're going to reuse and recycle here. How not to do it. The whole back has been pulled out, the staples have been removed, so many staples in the back of this thing. I still have to remove this fixed shelf. Before I do that, I'm just going to do kind of a quick rundown of the plan. So once the shelf is removed, I'm going to add another, a new backing to it. I have a, a, a sort of a quarter inch piece of hardboard, I'm going to glue and screw to the back of this to give it a new back. And then on the inside, we're going to silicone all the seams up, and then I'm going to lay vinyl floor on the bottom and the the back, silicone that down, and then I'm going to add a runner board across the bottom, and that's going to be where glass or plastic tracks are going to sit. We're going to look through sliding glass doors. So, fairly straightforward for the most part, I think. Uh, I'm building two of these, so I have two of these cabinets in total. I spent on the on everything but the glass. I spent about 150, so that's for two. So maybe about 75, 80 if you're just going to do one for the materials that I'm going to be using today. Should be about 80 bucks. Um, and the glass is about a little bit more. I didn't cheap out on glass. The glass is about a hundred by itself. And uh, I've done a few DIYs before. I, I built a, a cage for a, a day gecko for Madagascar, a giant day gecko. But this is the first one I've done for snakes. And I really wanted to give these guys a little bit of height because I, I like to see my boas climb. So that's the plan today. And uh, let's go. All right, so we're going to cut this shelf out. And like I said, I actually live in an apartment and it's pretty early in the morning. It's only about eight now. Uh, so I like to do things as quietly as possible. I could probably just take a hammer and hammer that. It's just too loud. I really don't want to get complaints. So this may not be the way you want to do it if you have a garage or something where you can do this outside, but I'm going to sort of gingerly do this. So it'll take a little longer than probably the average. But these, these shelves are actually, if you ever come across one of these, any of these fixed shelves in any cabinets, it's just normally wood pins that are holding it together. So uh, I don't actually think there's much glue even holding this shelf. So there's four or five pins down each each length and they just need to be cut. So I kind of just wedge a saw between and just sort of snap them as I go through. As you can see, power tools would be extremely helpful here. Just try forcing it. All 
right, so shelf is removed. So this is the side that I cut, and actually, it's pretty flush. Like, it looks terrible, but that's going to be covered, obviously, and uh, it's not too bad. Now, this side, unfortunately, when I pulled the shelf out, I should have cut that side, too, because it left holes where the pegs were. Where this side, the pegs are actually still in there. You can't really see them, but they're still embedded in the wood. And this left some pretty big holes. I'm not too worried about it. I'm just going to use silicone, and I'll fill those. That's going to be the ceiling. No one's going to see that anyway. And silicone will seal it right up, so it's not going to be a problem. All right, so now we're going to uh, add the back. This is already starting to make such a mess. I'm going to have to have all this cleaned up before my girlfriend gets home. So let's keep going. All right, so here's the material I'm going to use for the back. It's called... Let me see if I can zoom in on that. Not really. It's called hard board. And you find it in the wood section. Like I, I bought it at Home Depot. It's pretty cheap. It was, uh, I think about, I can't even remember, 10 bucks or something for, for two of these, I think, or, or, or maybe 10 bucks a piece. And I was going to do plywood, a quarter inch plywood, and then I, just, then I found this, and it was a little bit cheaper. And honestly, it's way more strength than it needs. Uh, I mean, plywood would have been stronger, but this is still really strong. It's essentially really compressed, almost like a cardboard. Now, obviously, the danger with using something like this is that if it does get wet, it's going to get damaged. But I know that's going to be completely sealed off through silicone and the vinyl floor. So this thing's never going to co come, come in contact with anything on the inside of the enclosure. Um, and it's lightweight, too. So let's put it on. So the first thing I'm going to do is run a bead of this product called No More Nails by LePage. I, I've never seen this before, but I just saw it in Home Depot and I thought I'd pick it up. So I'm going to run a bead of that around the perimeter, and then we're going to screw it in as well. So I just want to be better safe than sorry. Make sure it's really tied in there tight. That's on, and like I said, I'm literally just making this up as I go. I, I'm not really, I'm not a carpenter or anything like that. So I just see these materials in the store, and I'm sure some people are watching this, maybe cringing, like that's not the way you do it. I'm just hoping to give you guys some ideas, something that you can do uh, for not too expensive. I mean, I'm doing two cages for about 250 bucks, including the glass. A lot cheaper than buying a new cage. One cage would have been that much. All right, so I'm just gonna set this onto the glue, squeeze it, and then I'm going to uh, wipe off any excess that comes out, and then we're still gonna screw it in. And this stuff, actually, it doesn't dry super fast, but it sticks really fast. Like, they, it pretty much immediately is stuck to the surface. All right, so now I'm just gonna screw it in. We don't need to go crazy on the screws, maybe just a couple per side. I'm just using inch long screws. Just a few aside. I don't really have any tools, and all my tools are really, really bad. And these drill bits are wearing out. really I mean that's not coming off anytime soon all right so the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna silicone all the seams I'm gonna do this twice so the first time I'm gonna do it is now and then I'm gonna lay the floor and I'm gonna do it again it's definitely better to err on the side of using too much silicone rather than too little uh, especially with melamine so you do not want any water urates or pee or poop or anything seeping into this because it will just destroy the wood eventually over time. So I'm going to really seal it. I'm just using clear silicone. This is GE1 silicone. So when you're buying silicone, you want to make sure when I just always stay with GE because it's the stuff I know. Uh, there's two types of GE silicone generally. There's GE1 and GE2. GE1 says it's mold resistant. 
that's what you want. GE2 is mold free. So mold free means they actually add something to the silicone uh, to prevent it from growing mold. We don't want that. The additives are, are I think they can be toxic to animals. This is 100% safe and there's a bit of a fume when you're applying it. It really smells like vinegar. But other than that, once it dries, it's 100% safe. People use this in aquariums all the time, so that's a, you know, for sure it's okay. And uh, I don't have to worry too much about the appearance because most of this is going to be hidden, so we're just going to get to it. I always use my finger to smooth it out. I just think it's easier. And like I said, it doesn't have to be pretty in any sense of the word because nobody's going to be seeing this. It's actually going to be covered. I'm going to fill in some of these holes in the top. So there's a bunch of peg holes for when this was a shelving unit and then of course the giant holes that I created when I pulled that shelf off. So we're going to fill those with silicone as well. So I finished siliconing all the seams in the enclosure as well as uh, sealing up any of those little holes that we found on the roof of the enclosure. So the next piece will be adding the flooring. So I'm going to be putting flooring on the bottom obviously as well as the back because I want to protect that hard wood, or hardboard uh, material that I showed you guys earlier. I'm not going to put any on the sides, I just don't think it's necessary. The sides generally don't see a lot of wear. So this is vinyl flooring that I got from Home Depot. It kind of has a fake sort of hardwood look to it. Uh, very easy to put in. I'm going to use silicone to seal it to the floor. There's all sorts of different adhesives you can use to if you watch flooring videos. I just I don't know, I just made it up, I just went with silicone. I know silicone pretty much sticks to everything, and I also know that it's non-toxic, so that's why I wanted to use it. So this stuff will seal up the back really nicely, and it's also super easy to clean. Uh, it wipes off really, really easy. Uh, it's very durable. The only thing is it's very slippery, so I'm not entirely sure how well the snakes are going to be able to move across it. Because if you ever put a snake on a very non, a surface that has very low friction, they, they kind of don't move. So we'll see how that works. but. Anyway, the substrate over top should help them move around. So I'm going to cut this out, and then I have to wait and let that silicone inside. I don't need to wait let, let it cure, but I want to let it get at least a little bit hard, so maybe an hour or so. I'm going to turn my fans on and open up the windows in here because the smell of silicone is starting to kill me. So I'm going to take a little break, and then we'll get back to it in, uh, in a little bit. 